Kia ora from New Zealand everyone. I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. I'm a little tired right now because I just finished speed running this beautiful, colorful 1000 piece Ravensburger jigsaw puzzle um, titled, it's either Fashionista or Fantastic Fashionista by Demelza Hutton. Now, I know what you're gonna say. Why are you speed running a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle? It's it's so much more than a 500 piece, like it really is a marathon. And the reason why I'm doing that is that the New Zealand Masters Games are coming up. And they have a category which they call jigsaw racing, but it's speed puzzling. I went last year when it was up in Wanganui, and there's my silver medal. I came in second place in the individual category. They only had an individual category that time. This was a jigsaw puzzle we did. Um, Venus Puzzles was the brand, and it was custom made for the competition. So this year, the Masters Games are being held in Dunedin, so local to me. And there's two categories, a team and individuals. For the team, it is another thousand piece jigsaw puzzle. We know it's a limited edition, so I'm assuming then that it's custom made. I have a feeling they're gonna get the Venus Puzzle brand. And I also have a feeling it'll be photographs, local photographs of Dunedin, and perhaps a collage like this. Similarly, there's the individual category, thousand piece jigsaw puzzle. Also, it just says limited edition jigsaw puzzle. So I'm thinking for both, there'll be photographs, areas around Dunedin, perhaps the train station, Baldwin Street, maybe an albatross, some penguins, perhaps some beach scenes. Um, so I think there'll be photographs, perhaps a collage, maybe both of them will be a collage. I don't know. These are purely my guesses. But in preparation for the Masters Games, I've teamed up with Allison, Valme, and Wendy, and we've done a lot of speed runs together and trying different techniques, sorting, full flip, um, some sorting, some full flip, who works on this, who works on that. We, we've really done quite a few speed runs. And then individually, I've also started practicing some thousand piece jigsaw puzzles. Well, oh, it's a lot. And I'm still at the tail end of my head cold. For some reason, it's just lingering. And that's taking a bit out of me as well. But in this video, you are going to see a compilation of various speed runs. Um, we actually did this one right here, which I picked up from Worlds. We actually didn't do it at Worlds. We should have done it at Worlds. But we've practiced this as a team. This Robinsberger 1000 piece, and it's called West Coast Tranquility by Graham Herbert. So you'll see us speed run this one. We actually do the Wanganui one again as a team of four. This puzzle that I have here is one that we do plan on speed running as a team. We haven't done it yet. It reminds me very much of the Burano one from Worlds. You know, there was some water in buildings. So this is one we will eventually do as a team. I just did this one individual, as well as I redid a puzzle I previously sped run, the Clementoni Painted Ladies, because this is an illustration. It's color block. It's the type of style I love, but I need to practice you know, photographs, probably buildings, beaches, sky. So the Clementoni Painted Ladies was good to do. So you'll see that in this time lapse. And here are two more that I plan on speed running. This one here is called Copenhagen. This, not my style image, but this is the type of thing I need to practice for this speed puzzle competition. I think this is gonna be tricky and take quite a bit of time. This one's from Crown, which is an MGM Australia company. And I'm not looking forward to doing it, but I think it would be good preparation. As well, I don't know why, but I wanna speed run this Robinsberger Lost Places one. This one's called Souvenir Memory, what's it called? Dreamy, bittersweet memories. I think this is gonna be tricky as well, quite difficult, but this is my technique. I prepare myself by speed running puzzles that I find difficult, apart from this one, <laughs> that are not my style, that are not maybe standard speed run images, um, in order to prepare myself for the competition. So yeah, now the competition's coming up. It's not this weekend, as we have the battle of the YouTube puzzlers this weekend. So you, you kind of get an idea of when I'm filming this, but it's the following weekend. So I will do a recap 
of the competition. I plan on filming the time lapses so you see how we do. And I'll probably do quite a few more speed runs before then. But I wanted to get the video done and mostly focus on the team because you see me speed run a lot individually. Um, but I think it's fun to watch the team and to see how we work together, what we've done, changes. And one thing we've realized, oh my goodness, the quality of the jigsaw puzzle matters so much when it comes to cut, especially with photographs when you have a lot of like grass or sky. Don't even get me started, but you'll see it in the time lapse. So my goal is for teams, I just want us to really have fun. Valme and Wendy, not typical speed puzzlers, um, although they're getting so much better. Valme just did some personal best times and I think she's a lot faster than she gives her, herself credit for. And Wendy is so good like at doing border or piece shape sorting. And she's very good at just saying, okay, what can I do? How can I help you? She's a true team player. Allison's Allison. She's just amazing. <laughs> like she just goes to town and I'm a bit all over the show. So I think for teams, I think we're going to do well. And I know we're going to have fun. It's limited to 20 teams. I don't think they sold out for teams though. For individuals, it's also limited to 20 individuals. I'm hoping for subsequent years, they maybe won't spend the money on getting expensive custom puzzles done, perhaps approach a New Zealand brand. And I don't care if the puzzle's pre-released. I'd like to see more than just 20 people be able to enter, but that's just, that's just my opinion. So 20 people for individuals. My goal, and I shouldn't even say this, I'd like to finish within 30 minutes of Allison's time. Cause let's face it, she's just, she's gonna, she's so good. She's just a naturally fast puzzler. She's so good at sorting. And then if you watch her, it just reminds me a bit of Kristen from Norway. She just seems to know where the pieces go. Like always, no matter what the image is, she, it just feels like she grabs a piece and yep, yep. Yep, she sorts out a section of pieces and then boom, 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 boom. She just builds it and I'm always in awe of her. So if I could finish within 30 minutes of Allison's time, I don't care if I come last, but I'm comparing myself a bit to her. I'd like to be within 30 minutes of Allison's time. And if I am, um, that'll be a victory in my books. But I know we're gonna have so much fun it's a lot though, speed running a thousand pieces an individual. So we'll see if they make any changes for subsequent years. But let's watch all these time lapse. I'll yak away during them, explain to you what our thought process was and what we were doing. There's lots of brands. There's um, a Holdsin, there's a Robinsburger, there's an Ebu, there's this one from Venus Puzzles. There's, you know, just quite a variety. Because the other thing is, this is not a brand that you can buy in store. They're custom made and they're very expensive. So this is the only one from this brand we could practice on. I won't do a traditional outro because um, the video will end up being long enough. So I want to thank you right now for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy all my videos and please consider subscribing. But there you go. Let's see how we get on as a team. And by the way, we've only been puzzling as a team like the last few weeks we've been getting a lot of speed runs in but the four of us have never been available at the same time so this was a lot of fun to puzzle all four of us together and i just feel that we work well together it's a team we mesh well it's actually a lot of fun to puzzle with them and that's what really matters individually <laughs> i hope allison is nearby because i think i feed off of her energy um when this video comes out, you would have already seen the Battle of the YouTube Puzzlers. And I'm just going to say that Allison made me go a lot faster. I think if I would have done that puzzle on my own, I would not have gotten the amazing time that I got. I'm so proud of that time. I think I feed off her energy and I try to match her pace. So I'm hoping for individuals I'm nearby her and I can see her and be like, okay, keep going, keep going. Like, I hope so anyway. Okay, I'm just yakking and chatting and going on and on, but here, watch our practice time lapse, and then I'll have a video with the whole master's recap, and we'll see how we do. Ciao. 
So the first puzzle that we all did together was the Wanganui one from last year's Masters from Venus Puzzles. We decided that we would each pick one section. It's like four 250-piece puzzles. And Valme said she's really good with Sky, and you will see she is good. She finishes probably her section just as fast as I do mine or faster. Valme is there next to me. This is the first time we see her on camera. Everybody say hi to Valme. So she's working on the beach sunset scene. I'm doing the boat scene. Allison's doing the train and Wendy is doing the building. Now what's interesting is we've all kind of agreed, we've done this puzzle a few of us many times before and that building we feel is the most difficult part. And Wendy thought, give her the most difficult section so we could finish the other sections faster and even if she just did some pieces or did like some subsorting or P-shaped sorting, that once one person was done with their section, they could move and help her to finish her section. She's actually doing quite well. She's done the whole sky and the border area. Now, the difficulty with this puzzle, we noticed that the pieces for my boat section and Allison's train section kind of get mixed up a bit during the sorting. So we did have to give pieces back and forth to one another, but, but it wasn't a big deal. And also, I just, I can't work. You saw I dumped all my pieces in the box because they were just all in my way. And I think that threw me off to start. But at the competition, we're going to bring our boards. We will have the bottom of the box to use. And of course, during the entire time, I tell people, do you need to look at the box? If you need to look at the box, just let me know. I'll pass it to you. So you see, Allison's done her section. We've now connected to Valme's. And Wendy is now working with Allison on that building. And Wendy also, once she starts puzzling with someone else, she just goes up like a whole notch. She's so much faster. And look at Valme knock out that beach scene. I want you to pay attention to that. Valme is really good with skies and she knows she's good with skies. And I'll talk a bit more about that about the next puzzle. So we've all finished those last three sections and now we're just on the more difficult building and we're all tackling it together. I think it worked quite well actually. So we finished this in 58 minutes, just under an hour, and I was so pleased. I'm really hoping at the competition it'll be a similar style image where it's four sections, four different pictures from around Dunedin. We will each tackle one and then help one another out once we're done ours. So now we moved on to this jigsaw puzzle. Now, the previous time lapse was sped up, I think, two times. This is actually sped up four times. This is an old jigsaw puzzle from the brand Holdson, a New Zealand brand. And it's of the historic train station in Dunedin. I thought this would be really good for us to practice because there's a chance they will have an image of the train station on the jigsaw puzzle. Now, Valme is good with Sky. We've seen that. And um, let's just say that the piece cut of this jigsaw puzzle was horrible. Horrible. I think maybe the white red flowers that I'm kind of working on, those weren't too bad because they were small. And the actual train station itself wasn't too terrible because there was a lot of detail. But when we got down to the more orangey flowers, the greenery and the sky, oh my goodness, the false fits like... We redid the border I don't know how many times. All of us had problems. Valme was like, this sky is just horrible. The grass was horrible. Things, we were like, is this the right piece? It looks like the right piece. In fact, we probably found pieces that we were confident. Yep, that's the piece. It goes there. And we're talking 10, 15 minutes later going, something's off. Oh, no, that wasn't the right piece. My goodness, this was a perfect image to practice, but the quality of the jigsaw puzzle was horrible. And so I know we're not going to get, hopefully, such a horrible piece cut um, during the competition, but we may well get this image of the train station. So I think it was still good to practice, and it was definitely an endurance challenge. And you see we've swapped now. So Allison and Valme went to work on the greenery and Wendy and I are working on the sky. And let's face it, we don't have that many sky pieces left. But wow, what a struggle. And that top dark border part near Wendy, I think that was redone three or four or five times. Like nothing would fit anywhere. 
And I'm glad it was a team effort for this jigsaw puzzle. I would not want to have done this one on my own. I think I would have lost it. It, it would have just, the table would have been flipped. And Allison is doing great. And eventually we're all working together on these few green pieces. And this, this was a chore. Remember, this is sped up four times faster than the previous time lapse. This should not have been a difficult image. A bit of challenging with the repeat design, but not as difficult as it was. And it took us two hours and 18 minutes, mostly because of the piece cut. It was just terrible, absolutely terrible. Now this puzzle is really, really old, probably done many, many times. And there was a piece missing on top of that. But I don't think if it was a better quality piece cut, I don't think it would have taken us near this long. Now the next puzzle we're doing, this I picked up at Worlds. It is from Ravensburger, 1000 pieces called West Coast Tranquility. And we thought our plan here was we would sort out the border pieces, sort out the inner white edge pieces that go around each of the photos. I think they're photos. They almost look like photos with a bit of illustration kind of, it's, it's tricky. And then we fully flipped. So Valmi and I are working on the border and the inner white borders. And Allison and Wendy are up there doing some subsorting and building. And Allison is so great at sorting piles. She just sees textures and colors and everything. And then Wendy would just grab a small pile of pieces and boom, okay, I'll build that, boom, I'll build that. So Valme and I are kind of doing like, I'd say the inner guts of the jigsaw puzzle. And then once that was done, I would just move over and grab the pieces that Allison and Wendy had already assembled. And because I was quite familiar with the box, you can see the boxes over where I am. Once again, you know, I do say, do you need to look at the box? You gotta look at the box. Let me know if you wanna see the box. So I'm not hogging the box, <laughs> but um, I could just slot the sections that they had done right into the puzzle. And then we just, we communicated very well. Oh, I'm looking for all these kind of pieces. Oh, I'm looking for all these pieces. Okay, this section is done. That section is done. It was weird because at the time we were doing this puzzle, look, wait, look at Allison here. She grabbed all those green pieces and then look, she's just boom, 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 boom. Those trees look so difficult and she just sees it and she did so well with that. Anyway, where was I? Um, we just communicated very well, talked, okay, and made sure like once one section was done, we'd be like, okay, this upper section is done. Okay, I'm just looking for pieces with a little bit of pink. Um, you know, Wendy did a lot of piece-shaped sorting. We did a lot of subsorting. You can see here Valmes grabbed like all the whiter pieces and are putting those in. So part of it working as a team is talking, making sure you know who's working on what, who's doing what, and um, in the end, it was just like the darker rock pieces that we had left. And I think we were doing so well. We worked so well as a team here. And it was such a fun puzzle to do. Again, I blur out Allison because she doesn't like to be on camera. It's not because I don't like showing her. And um, I wish we would have done this at Worlds. I think we would have done really well. And look at that, just over an hour, an hour and four minutes, and none of us had done this jigsaw puzzle before. None of us, this was a brand new puzzle to all of us. So I was so proud of our time and it's a beautiful puzzle. Absolutely beautiful. Love the layout, love the design. It was so much fun to do. This next puzzle is from Westwinds Industries. It's from the 1990s. It's from their Pieces of New Zealand series and this one's called Alpine Summer. Now, this is also sped up four times because this is a difficult image. Valme is working on the sky again. Wendy's doing a lot. I think of the border. She eventually jumps in and helps on the sky with Valme. Allison and I are working on the lower area. There's a beach, there's wooded areas, and lupins, lots and lots and lots of lupins. The difference with this is when I compare this puzzle to the train station, this to me would be a much more difficult image, a much more difficult image than the train station, okay? But the piece quality was great. You can see there, um, Wendy's working on P-shaped sorting for the sky. It took time, but we were able to do it. No, at no point we were frustrated. At no point we were like, oh, that piece actually doesn't go there. No false fits. This was an older puzzle, but a lot of variety of piece cuts and piece shapes. And the only difficulty was the difficulty of the image itself. 
lots of fun. And Allison did great on those lupins. Valme and Wendy did great on the sky. But those our boards came in very, very handy. Notice how I have double-sided boards. One side is white, one side is black. Some of them are slipperier, so you can build on them and slide sections off. And some of them are felt, so that the pieces don't easily slide off. This was a great team effort. And at no point were we frustrated. We knew it would just take time. And it was a difficult image, and I'm glad we did it. And this was a gift to me from my lawyer's mother. <laughs> And I loved it. It's the first time any of us do this jigsaw puzzle. And I think we could potentially have a scene like this at the Masters, but hopefully it would be like one quarter of the puzzle only and not the entire puzzle. Definitely reminded me of the Lupins at Worlds, but working in a team with other people, you know, I have them to encourage me and feed off of them. And so I never got discouraged. We were, we did really well and I'm quite pleased. So do you think this took us longer than the train station? Yes or no? I would have assumed it would have taken us longer than the train station because it was a much more difficult image. But because the pieces were lovely and worked quite well, we were actually 13 minutes faster than the train station. And the train station should have been a much easier image. So this more difficult image was faster because the puzzle cut quality was really nice. There was a nice detail in the sky. You can see all those lovely lupins and it's a beautiful New Zealand scene. So we're working on another Holdson puzzle. This one is much newer, better cut. <laughs> and it's from their Royal Residence series and this one is Balmoral Castle. Again, when, when we do the team, we try to divide the puzzle up into two and maybe team up. And uh, so right now, I think Wendy's working on the border, the sky. I'm working on the transition pieces between the sky and the building. And I have all the castle pieces. Valme and Allison are working on the lower greenery area. And I will admit, I don't know why, but I struggled with this puzzle. And I I don't know the castle pieces. I just couldn't make heads or tails of them. And I think that's the thing with working with the team. Maybe it's not your day. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you're tired. And we, we do multiple puzzles at a time when we speed run. But you have your team there to encourage you and keep you going. And sometimes I feel bad like, oh, I didn't pull my weight. But none of them ever felt like I had not pulled my weight. And there were other times where someone else said, oh, I struggled with that puzzle. I hardly did anything. But in my mind, I was like, no, you, you definitely did. You did. You contributed. So I think as a team, we work really well together. Because if one of us is slower, someone else picks up the slack. And I really, really enjoy puzzling with them. It is so much fun. So... Because I rewatch this now and I go, look, I, I actually did kind of well there with the transition line. Why was I being so hard on myself at the time? I think all those brown pieces for the castle, I just wasn't having it. Luckily, when I quickly realized that, I stopped. I've moved over. I've given um, Wendy the transition line so she can do more of the sky there. And I'm, there was another transition line between the greenery and the bottom of the castle. So I'm doing those pieces and jumping in with Valme and Allison as well. And they did so well down at the flowery area and there's people down there. This definitely had a much better piece cut than that older Holdson we had done. And it was an enjoyable puzzle. Eventually, you're going to see once this lower area is done, I am subsorting the castle pieces. Pieces that's had some greenery on it, pieces that were just brown, and pieces that had a lot of the windows. And maybe, I don't know why I kind of struggled, but eventually Allison comes and she helps me and we work on the castle together. And that was very helpful. And Valme again is back with Wendy doing the sky. I think let's just face it, the two of them rock the skies and uh, they did great up there. And once Allison was helping me with the castle, it actually took us a bit of time to get, get going and we do sort by piece shape, but eventually together we knock it out. But this puzzle was a bit more tricky than I expected it. I don't know why. I, yeah, just sometimes I can't visualize how the pieces go and the orientation. But together as a team, I was really proud. We did really well. I think we subdivide puzzles very well. We communicate very well. When we get stuck, we talk to one another. We help one another out. We move 
you know, what we're working on. And so it took us an hour and 22 minutes, which is still a very great time. Not our fastest, but by no means not our slowest. And the holds in puzzles are a little loose, but this one was much better. We didn't encounter like false fits in the sky or anything. I think it was still good to practice. I do think we're gonna get a photograph at Masters. So then we decided, let's do a fun puzzle. And we decided to kind of really change it up. We did a full flip, completely full flip. And Valme's like, I'll work on the sky and the boat areas. This is Ibu puzzle. It's called Swedish Fishing Village, if I remember correctly. And we were simply calling out what we wanted to work on. I was like, I'll do the pink house with the red roof. And Allison was like, I'll do this, I'll do that. Wendy's working on the border. Eventually, Wendy also works on the church pieces. I think Valme had the most difficult part because we had very small, specific, colorful buildings and she had like all the blue pieces. And we really wondered if this was going to be faster or slower. I think Allison had done the puzzle before once. I think she was the only one that had done the puzzle before. It also came with a poster. The poster is over by Allison, which was good because we had the box, the other side of the table had the poster. And as we were just picking pieces, Alice and I also made little piles of similar textures. And we would just talk to one another. I'd say, oh, look, here's the pile of these pink flowers. And she'd be like, oh, here's the pile of the, not, I guess there's like a walkway through, through the puzzle. Eventually, though, what I don't like about a full flip is you have the pieces everywhere. And that's what we're doing now is trying to move, you know, the sections you're done, put them into place. And just so you know, when we film these for speed puzzling, I am not concerned with getting like the best footage on camera. I hope you all understand. I want the camera to be out of the way. Um, and so it ends up sometimes that the puzzle is at the far end of the table and you maybe can't see it coming all together. I hope you understand. But basically moving sections of the puzzle to then connect it all and get all those loose pieces out of your way, it's always a bit tricky. And that's why I do like that we use those boards. Valme is using the bottom of a Robin's Burger box to move pieces around. That is so smart. But those foam boards that I have are great to build on and slide stuff up. Um, at Worlds, Jeanette loved doing that. She, she would grab pieces, build on her lap on a foam board, and then just slide the pieces into place. And that worked great. We had so much fun with this puzzle. And we had no idea how long it was taking us. We had absolutely no idea. I thought we were doing great. Others thought we were going pretty slow. And it was just lots of fun. And guess what? We rocked it an hour, three minutes. I was so pleased. So that shocked me that the full flip did so well, but maybe it's because it would be harder to do a lot of sorting. You could sort all the red pieces, all the blue pieces, all the green pieces, but you'd have like pretty big piles. But once again, as a team, we did great. It was so much fun to do that. So here I am now, I am redoing Clementoni's 1000 piece painted ladies jigsaw puzzle. I had previously done this January 2023, so it's nearly exactly one year to the date that I am redoing this jigsaw puzzle. Approaching it quite differently, I did a full sort, sky pieces, transition sky to the upper skyline back buildings, border pieces, um, the back, you know, in, uh, city buildings are in one pile, the houses are in one big pile. The greenery, grass at the bottom, that's what I'm working on now, then all the trees. And so I did approach this differently. And my first time a year ago was three hours, 45 minutes. I was hoping for an improvement in time. I was like, do you think I can be faster? I would hope so. I've done so much speed puzzling since, so much practice. Now, I started working on the trees and I quickly realized, no, nah, this is a bit tricky. And so since I wasn't figuring out where the trees were all going, I said, let's go to the buildings. So that's what I'm working on now, the houses. And maybe I could have subsorted the houses into the specific colors, but a lot of the houses, the colors on the pieces feel very similar. So I am a bit picking and placing, and I am a bit selectively picking through that pile of house pieces. And I'm trying not to rely so much on the image, but you know me, I love looking at the box. It's there though. I've, at least I've gotten better at not holding the box. That's a big improvement. I'm also sorting out the dark roof pieces to the side as I find them to keep them to the end. And 
I feel like as I was doing this, I was like, I think I'm going faster. I think I'm doing better than the first time. Once again, having done those houses, it was then a lot easier to do the trees, which I'm doing now and filling them in. So I forget who said this to me at one point in time. They said, do the easier sections first, because then when you come to do the harder sections, you have something to build off of. I'm doing the transition between the sky and the cityscape. Is that, what's that? I guess that would be the better term to do. And what I was really proud of here is I was doing more of a pick and place on the houses, but here for these back buildings, I was actually trying to go through my pile and find the pieces with the same texture and grab all those out and build, you know, here's five pieces from this building. Okay, let's put them. Here's five pieces from this building. Okay, we'll do those. Here's all pieces with bright white. Okay, we'll do those. So I was being more selective as to which pieces I was grabbing out of the pile. I wasn't just grabbing at random. I think that actually worked well because it's a complicated image. Now this sky, the white pieces and that dark blue line are pretty good. The border wasn't too bad. I P-shaped sorted and just took my time. But man, those kind of more solidy blue pieces, there were still a few that were a bit lighter and I grabbed those out and I knew to place those first. But then after a while, it, it's just going through. It, I know it's two rows of blue. It's like two to three rows of blue and it feels like it takes forever. So at this point I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna beat my original time. So my original time again, three hours, 45 minutes. I was hoping for an improvement. Even if it was 10 minutes, I was gonna be happy. But I do feel that I was better at looking at shapes and look at that. I knocked off 43 minutes from my time, three hours, two minutes, so close to being under three hours. I was much better on those sky pieces at looking at the shape, the prongs, the feet, what I needed to fill in that gap. I was so, so pleased. Now again, this is a photograph, not the style of image that I enjoy. Here, I am doing a style of image that I absolutely enjoy. It's an illustration, color block, Thousand Piece Robinsberger, the artist Demelza Hutton. You may be familiar with her. I've had um, some of her artwork on my channel before. I love it. This one, I can't tell if the English name is just fashionista or fantastic fashionista, but I said do a full sort. Do, you can see the lovely color block sorting that I'm doing. There's a lot of white pieces and white and black pieces. And then what I realize is start with the color with the, that appears the least amount of times in the puzzle. So you'll see that I start with like the pinks, the purples, the yellows, the orange. And I'm actually quite pleased because once again, oh there I'm holding the box a little bit, I know, I know. But I really feel like I, I'm looking at the pieces more. Does that make any sense? Of course you look at the pieces, but I'm really looking at the pieces more to find, like in the green here, I'm like, okay, let's find all the pieces with this similar texture. Let's now grab all the pieces with this similar texture. Instead of just grabbing, like I normally do for a busy puzzle, I just grab a piece in place, grab a piece in place. Not so easy to do here. Here, I'd be like, okay, this, they're all like sweaters or shirts or dresses that are hanging up in closets. And I'd be like, okay, this one looks like it has a line, a squiggly line down the middle. Let's grab all the red pieces with this squiggly line down the middle. I'm not sure if I'm making any sense. I'm still sick and a bit delusional here. I just feel like I've gotten better at picking out pieces with similar textures in order to build faster. Is that, I think that's what I'm trying to say. The trickier part, these blues were definitely a bit more tricky. And then eventually you get to these little teardrop windows at the top and they took me a bit of time. Um, but I was pleased, like trying to find the little detail, the little lines, you know, because it's very much a repeat and you could just try the pieces one after another. But finding the little details that stand out for each one and the shapes of the pieces. I'm just, I think I'm doing better. I by no means am a super fast puzzler, speed puzzler, but I think I'm middle of the pack. I enjoy doing it. I do this because I enjoy doing it. It's lots of fun. I will admit a thousand piece though. Oh, I really hope the Masters Games changes and goes down to a 500 piece. It's, it's a marathon. So now what I'm working on are the white pieces with the most amount of black, because that appears between these cupboards. 
along the floor. So I'm trying to do the pieces with still have a lot of dark parts left to them first. And it does feel watching this back that I'm a bit all over the place <laughs> and I probably am. I don't know if I could have done this faster. It was tricky. Um, the top part had a bit more creamy color to it and had a design in the background, which is probably hard to see on camera as opposed to the bottom floor area. But I think overall I was like, oh, I really want to be under three hours. If I felt like if I could do those painted ladies at just over three hours, I'd really love to, for this time to be under three hours. My fastest 1000 piece time so far was two hours and 35 minutes. So I was hoping that this might be comparable, but I wasn't sure, of course, my timer's there on the side. And, you know, I just felt like this was me. I love this puzzle. And part of me was sad that I sped run it because I think I would have enjoyed doing it at a slower pace. That happens when you're speed running a puzzle. I can always redo it. I borrowed this from Allison. So Allison's time, just so you know, was two hours and 24 minutes. Oh my goodness. Once I found that out, I was like, oh, okay. I'd like to be within half an hour of Allison's time, remember? So if I could just be under three hours, maybe 2.54, I'd be really, really, really pleased. Well, here I am at the end, just the lower border area. And for some reason, I got a little tripped up at the bottom there for a bit, but eventually it just all came together. It's a lovely puzzle and look at my time, 2.34, my fastest 1,000 piece time, only 10 minutes slower than Allison. I was shocked. I was so pleased. I was so excited. Look how beautiful this jigsaw puzzle is. Such a fun puzzle. Probably not what we're going to get at Masters. Oh, but I'm going to keep practicing and hopefully, you know, I'll do well on the day. I just want to have fun. I would love for my time to be around the three hour mark. You know, I don't know. I think they're going to give us tricky imagery beaches, sunsets, um, the train station, Lanark Castle, who knows? I know we're going to have so much fun as a team to work together. And, and that's the most important part, just having fun on the day. But yeah, I'm going to do a few more 1000 piece speed runs to practice and I'll do the best I can. And I'll come back with another video and let you know how the competition went. So wish us all luck and I know we'll have fun. And that's the most important part.